It's time for the mic drop as we talk about one topic to end the show. Tomorrow marks the two year anniversary of the insurrection, the J6 mob attack on our capital and democracy. Now we'll probably never know for sure, but it's estimated that over 2,000 rioters went into the Capitol, and in the 24 months that have passed, approximately 978, give or take, have been arrested and charged in connection with the event. Of that group, approximately 335 have received sentences of varying lengths for their crimes. Now, in my mind, the events of that day and the aftermath rank high up among the darker moments in American history. One of the most extreme examples of political violence we've seen in at least a generation. But there are those among us who have tried to downplay it, calling it a little dust up or a normal tourist visit. And there are also those among us, including some elected officials, who refuse to condemn political violence like it or the rhetoric that leads to it. And I'm sure it's with this in mind that yesterday, military veterans hand-delivered letters to top members of the Republican House, urging them to publicly condemn political violence. The letter, written by former Metro PD officer Michael Fanone and signed by over a thousand military veterans, active duty members, law enforcement officers, and military families, reportedly details several of the recent incidents of violence we've seen. The attack on the FBI headquarters in Ohio after the lawful execution of a search warrant on Mar-a-Lago and the hammer attack on Paul Pelosi, amongst others. Now, what's maddening to me about this is that former officer Fanon, a man who almost lost his life to the savagery of January 6th, as well as the rest of those involved in this letter, felt they had to do this, had to ask duly elected leaders not to incite violence against their fellow citizens. And I'm sure they did this knowing there's no guarantee their ask will be honored. In fact, I'm willing to bet that they'll be mocked for it because that's where a select number of our political leaders are at. They've happily embraced chaos and all the dysfunction that comes with it, which is no way to run a functioning government, let alone a nation of 330 million people, a select number of who are also rooting for the chaos. There's a line from a movie that I've found has a little truth to it. Some men just want to watch the world burn particularly when they have nothing else to offer. But there are still good people like Officer Fanon and others out there who have something to offer, and it would be wise of our leaders to accept it and listen. 